So, welcome to the first tutorial on Brow Edit 3. Um, basically, you're going to need a patcher, which is going to download the latest, latest version. And uh, you're going to need some, uh, some client data. So, over here, I prepared a small folder, uh, my Brow Edit folder. And in there, I've got my RO folder with a empty data and a data.grf. So, I'm going to start that patcher. And uh, over here you can see all the different versions of Brow Edit. Not all the different versions, but the most recent ones. And there's two buttons here to update FFmpeg and add the effects. For now I'm just going to go and uh, download this one. So press OK. Uh, on my different screen I've got some, uh, some pop-ups going on. And you should be greeted with uh, this window. Also, there is this little window in the background. This will show you some debug information, but you'll be working in this mostly. The first time you start a Brow Edit, you get this, uh, this window, the configuration window, and it's asking me for my RO path, which is uh, gonna be this folder here, the RO folder. Um, so I can just type it in here, RO. I want it to load my GRF file, RO. Um, data.grf you can also just browse for them uh, you can set the priority here you can remove grf files but this is the minimum information the minimum uh, configuration you need to make uh, in here there's also different uh, configurations like your camera mouse speed the field of view uh, for instance if you want to have a light skin or a dark skin uh, and yeah a lot of different uh, options and more options are to come, of course. Uh, here we can set the GRF editor path. I'm just going to set this to the GRF editor. Uh, and here we can set the FFmpeg path. We don't have that installed yet. So I'm going to hit save. It's going to load the GRF file. And uh, basically we're ready to go. So we can uh, start, open. And uh, for instance, Prontera. You can double click this one. And it should open up Prontera. Now, the basic controls are um, for the camera. You can use the right mouse button or the middle mouse button to, um, if you just drag it, you're going to pan the camera. If you shift click it, you can rotate the camera and you can rotate it up, rotate it up and down. And then when you scroll, you can zoom in. Then there's also a, yeah, a a little bit of a secret camera movement. Uh, if you hit, hold control, you can move the camera straight up and straight down. This can sometimes be handy to get into, into those nasty corners. But uh, the down movement will be reset automatically when you move the camera again. And then here in the top right, there's a little cube. And this cube, when you click it, it will uh, yeah, rotate the camera to the proper axis. So that allows you to quickly go to different views, side views, front view, etc. And also gives you a little bit of orientation. Now the user interface in Browidit is uh, quite flexible. So uh, for instance here you see uh, a brush size thingy. You can drag this to the left and the right to change it. You can also double click it and type whatever value you want. You can even make really huge values with this, but if you drag it, it will Go back to these normal sizes. Let's put it back to one. Uh, you can also control click it to um, to change, and basically that's how you can interact with these things. Then Brow Edit also supports docking. So for instance, here you see this undo stack window here. Uh, basically, that one will show all the changes you've made. If I undo, it will reset itself. And all these panels, you can drag them along and dock them anywhere you want. So, for instance, if I don't want to have it, if I want to have it down there, I can do this. I can put it down there. I can put it uh, as a tab here, or not as a tab. I can put it to the right here, and you can even make it into a separate window. So, if I unmaximize this, you can uh, separate the undo stack. And you can put the undo stack on a secondary display 
or wherever you want it. For now, I'm just going to leave it uh, down here. The undo stack is not that important, so it doesn't have to be that big. Um, and that's basically the yeah the starting of uh, brow edit. Um, you can have uh, maps open. You can have multiple maps open. So if I open another map, there. Uh, now I have two maps open, so I can switch between them with tabs. I can put them next to each other like this, or below each other, or put them on a different monitor, whatever you want. It should all work uh, properly. Going back to this map. Um, and then before you get started, I would recommend you to check the hotkeys. There's uh, hotkey settings here in the, in the me me menu. And in here, as you can see, the first time you open Brow Edit, it will set all the default hotkeys. You can scroll through this window, and in the, the, the bottom here, you can say load defaults to load all the default settings again. The default settings sometimes change. If I update something, we get new uh, new settings. But for now, yeah, this basically works okay. Um, and yeah, you can also filter here, so for one, new map or all the wall edit options that's all uh, in here and uh, yeah you can change them okay should apply them uh, immediately uh, so that's an important window to change all the hotkeys if you forgot where a function is there's a default search box so you can press space and then in here you can say oh I wanna uh, smoothen the color map or yeah, uh, make a new map open the map that way you can quickly get to a function with your keyboard um, and then here in the top this is a map view so every map view has this little uh, little toolbar and here you can change different things uh, the gadgets are for later uh, I'll explain those later uh, we've got a button here to snap to the grid you can also toggle this by holding shift or you can click it and then here you can see the grid size and there's a, a different grid system. I'll get back to that later. Over here is a small slider to show the quad tree. The quad tree is a little thing that shoots around all your map, all of your map completely. So you can see here in bronze era, everything is nicely boxed out. And this is a structure that RO uses to optimize rendering speed. So without this, you get some black boxes. Here you can visualize it, but you usually don't need to uh, to see that. And then over here, we have two buttons which are interesting. The top left one is the perspective ortho. So you can change that. This is an orthographic view, which means it's a 2D view. And that can be useful for making minimaps, for instance. If I click here. It's going to yeah, center the camera uh, on the top of the map. And you can make a nice screenshot for that. Or uh, you can go back to perspective mode. And now you get to see some depth again. Uh, yeah, just use whatever you prefer. Um, and then here we have the view options. And with the view options, you can actually uh, show and hide different aspects of the rendering process. So over here, we've got the shadow map. So this will disable all the shadows. The color map, which will disable colors. Well, there's no colors on this map. But um, if we open, um, I think Commodore should have some uh, some lights. If I disable the color map, you can see all the colors go away. And then here we have tile colors. You can subtly see them here. Uh, every tile in RO can have a different color. I'll get back to that later with color editing mode. And with this button, you can show and hide them. It's an easy way to just give a little bit of, uh, yeah, to break the repetition a little bit. Uh, lighting, this will disable all the lighting effects. Uh, and this is about the lighting, like in the engine, you see here, the side here is darker than the top. And you can disable that with the lighting button. 
Now, if you're going to work with lighting, it's also very nice that you can disable the textures now. So here you can actually see the shaded and the non-shaded versions. And here you can actually see the light map very clearly. You can see that it's quite low res, but yeah, once you add the textures, it all blurs together quite nicely. There's a button for smoothing your uh, your color map. Uh, if we go to, I think Bayon Dungeon shows this well. If we go to a map, you can see that these, yeah, these these colors they don't really blend well together. That's the the, the original uh, blending that RO does. Uh, we can actually disable this. So if we click on smoothing, you can see that it actually turns really smooth. Some clients have an option to enable this or disable this as well. Then we have an option to view uh, empty tiles. Well, there's no empty tiles here, but if we open um, Bronze Right Inside, for instance, over here you can see these blue tiles here are all the empty tiles. And if I disable those, you won't see them. And if you enable them uh, here, you can see them again. Then we have uh, the GAT, the altitude uh, and uh, the ground collision uh, uh, yeah, map. You can also show that or hide it. You can change the opacity so if you just want to see it very faintly or if you want to have it completely overlaid. You can change that. And then uh, as a last option we can show fog. This is still a little bit in progress because the fog rendering is not entirely game accurate. But uh, yeah, it does uh, add a little bit of uh, atmosphere. If we, uh, for instance, open veins and we view the fog, then you basically see nothing until you zoom in. So that should give you a little bit of a preview what a map looks like in game. But remember, keep your camera close to the ground like it is in the original game. Otherwise, you're not going to see anything. And then, yeah, while you're editing, sometimes it can be convenient to hide and show different things. Uh, so, for instance, you can hide all the models and then you can see all the effects and sound effects. You can uh, hide the effects. So... Like for instance, this, uh, these smoke thingies. Uh, we can show or hide the sounds. Basically, there's some uh, sounds hidden, like here in the trees. And uh, you can enable or disable those. Uh, we can en enable or disable lights. I'm going to make another video about that. And we can hide the water as well. So that's a little bit of a showcase of what you can yeah, basically uh, click around just by uh, by opening Brow Edit and opening some maps. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing some, uh, some different features. So uh, be sure to look out for that.